Hello guys, this is Fusion Forge, and in this video, I'll show you how to make a checkers board in OnShape. So without further ado, let's get started. First, go up here and select workspace units. Make sure that you're, they're set to inches, and then start a sketch on the top plane using Shift S. Now use Shift 5 to go to the top view. Press R to start a center rectangle. Click on the center, drag outwards. You want the length of this rectangle to be 15.82 inches, and you want the width to be 15.125 inches. Now that you've done this, press escape, click and then drag both of these dimension lines outwards. Now what you want to do is press O for offset, select all four of these rectangles right here, and then offset this, Click double clicking this number, and then changing the value to 0.5. Confirm this, and then Offset this inner rectangle again by a value of 0.31 inches. Now that you've done that, go up here and select the linear pattern. Select this line, change the number to 8, and change the distance between them to be 1.69 inches. Now that you've done that, confirm it. Press G for two-point rectangle. Select this line and select this line. Ch change the width to be 0.2 inches. Leave the length as it is because that will be the exact length required to make it coincidentally constrained to both lines right here. Now press D, dimension this rectangle from the top to be 1.6 inches. Now go up here and select linear pattern. Linear pattern this rectangle changing this number to 1, and then changing the number of rows slash columns to be 7. As for the distance between them, it should be negative 1.8, leaving room for the initial glitch, which then you would have to remove the negative sign, then confirm. Now that you have this, zoom in to one row with all of these lines. Press M for the snipping tool, click, and then drag it across. So it will follow your cursor, but what this does is it, it automatically snips anything that, you, that it comes across. So now, if you do accidentally nick one of these lines, it will delete it. If you don't, if you want to remedy that, press Ctrl Z to undo that line, or that particular snip. Do the same for all of these columns. Make sure not to eliminate the origin just by clicking and then snapping like this, because if you do accidentally nick the origin itself, it will remove all of the constraints that we have applied to it. If you want to be more careful, just make sure to click on the line separately and then continue on your way. Now that you've done all of this, press Ctrl E to extrude. This will extrude the outermost rectangle. We want it to, the depth to be 0.1 inches and then confirm. Now what you want to do is select chamfer. Press Ctrl 7 to go into an isometric view and then chamfer all of these upper lines by a distance of 0.16 inches. It should be facing inwards, measurement type should be offset, chamfer type should be distance and angle. As for the angle, you can select whatever you'd like. Let me show you using Shift 1 to go to the front view. The angle dictates exactly how much of the bottom is left. So, as for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll select the angle of 25. I could increase it to 30 just to minimize this upper point right here. Now, confirm. Press Shift 5 to go back into top view. Show you sketch 1. Press Shift E. Extrude this, and then all of these inner lines. Now, once you've done that, 
select the end type to be up to face and then select this face right here as for everything else make sure that it is set to new and then confirm so each one of these should be its own separate part we can change part 2's appearance to be more gold in color and as for part 1 we can just make it more darker in color now go up to the top view press shift E to extrude and then extrude all of these squares in a diagonal way for the end type select up to face for the face select this interface right here make sure that it's set to new then confirm now select parts part 3 scroll down all the way to part 34 hold down shift and then click on part 34 to select all of them go up here and select composite part select and make it closed then confirm it now change the appearance of this to be red then confirm what a closed part does is it essentially closes all of the parts off to any other sort of experimentation or changes that I could do normally, like I can do with parts 1 and 2. Now, press Shift E, extrude the remaining squares. then confirm. Now that you've done this, make sure that your extrusion is set to up to face, with the face being this inner one right here. And then go up here, select composite part, again from part 3, and then hold down, select part 34, make sure that it's closed, and then confirm. Now change composite parts 2's appearance to be the hexadecimal value 40 40 40 to make them completely black now you can rename these parts as red and black if you want I personally am not going to press shift 7 to go to an isometric view P to hide all planes and then hide the sketch please remember to like and subscribe and have a good day